Omicron cases in just one day as the travel industry raises the alarm about pre-flight testing. The jump in the number of cases of the new variant has led to questions about whether the travel restrictions are still the best way to stop the spread. Yeah, I do think we just need to make sure we take as a precautionary measure the steps necessary to stop uh, the, uh, any new variants coming into this country. Also ahead, remembering Arthur, a vigil for the murdered six-year-old and a review launched into why it happened. There is a new storm coming, even though 3,000 are still without power tonight from the last one ten days ago. And... Crashes and clashes in Formula One. Lewis Hamilton wins in Saudi Arabia in one of the most dramatic Grand Prix in years. This is ITV News with Chris Shipp. Hello, good evening. There's been a big jump in the number of confirmed cases of the Omicron variant here in the UK, with the total rising by more than 50% in a single day. Ministers have defended changing travel rules to require pre-flight coronavirus tests for all passengers arriving in the country, even though the holiday industry described it as a hammer blow. But with 246 Omicron cases now recorded on British soil, there are also questions about the extent to which travel restrictions can now stop or slow the spread of the variant. Our political correspondent Carl Dinnan has the latest. Drive-through testing in Surrey today. The testing system only picks up a certain amount of the Omicron variant and as it's not yet clear how much of a threat it poses, ministers hope to slow its spread with measures not always popular like pre-departure tests for travellers. Well, look, we weigh up the balance very carefully. I do think we just need to make sure we take as a precautionary measure the steps necessary to stop uh, the, uh, any new variants coming into this country seeding and undoing the good work that we've done with getting the virus under control. The travel industry has already been hard hit by coronavirus and the new pre-departure tests for anyone coming into the UK have been described by its representatives as a huge blow. What's the problem with asking people to complete what is a relatively inexpensive lateral flow test? Some people would be reluctant to uh, travel with a pre-departure test in place because if that test were to be positive, they would then be faced with having to self-isolate in the country uh, where they were as opposed to in the UK. This is the rise in detected Omicron cases over the last few days. But only a proportion of test results are sent for sequencing, so the true figure will be considerably higher. As the variant appears highly transmissible and already here, scientists in South Africa, where it was identified, say it's too late for travel restrictions. The knee-jerk reaction from the rest of the world has been totally uncalled for. Why not wait for the signs and look at the signs? And the number one thing that the signs of transmission would tell you is that if there's a very transmissible virus, uh, travel bans is not going to keep that virus out of your country. But here, the government hopes that travel restrictions will at least slow the spread of the Omicron variant, while scientists work out whether or not it actually is a serious threat to public health. Carl Dinan, ITV News. After the shocking court case into the murder of Arthur Labinjo Hughes last week, the government has announced a national review into the circumstances which led to his death. Outside his home in Solihull today, his grandmother joined hundreds of others at a vigil and released balloons in memory of the six-year-old. After the shocking court case into the murder of Arthur Labinjo Hughes last week, the government has announced a national review into the circumstances which led to his death. Outside his home in Solihull today, his grandmother joined hundreds of others at a vigil and released balloons in memory of the six-year-old. Vincent McAvinney reports. Arthur, are you going to play for England? This video released by Arthur Labinjo Hughes' family is how they want the smiling six-year-old to be remembered. So you're going to play for Liverpool, then Tottenham. What about England? Those dreams were extinguished by those who were meant to want the best for him in life. 
Today, outside the home his father and stepmother so cruelly tortured and killed him in, the community came together with Arthur's grandmother to pay their respects. It's just a pause here. And, uh... But in a sign of just how moved the whole country has been by this tragic case, more football matches were stopped at six minutes in a mark of respect for Arthur's all too short life. A public grief and anger the government has responded to with a national review into safeguarding failures. It's right that we look at the criminal justice end, and in between that, I think the job of social workers, particularly those looking at children of uh, at particular risk, we need to learn the lessons. Education Secretary Nadim Zahawi will unveil the full details in a common statement tomorrow. It's important to note, though, that whilst it's being called a national review, it is just a review of the agencies and the events in Solihull that then might be shared nationally. It's not yet at the level that we've seen in previous cases where you have an independent or judge-led inquiry, which then leads to structural changes. This review will, though, look at how safeguarding measures for vulnerable children could be improved in the event of another national lockdown. Social workers haven't had the same freedoms to get close to children as they, as they did pre-pandemic. Schools weren't open in the way that they normally are, so it was more difficult to see children on their own. Now, many, many children were seen and protected, but I think that, yes, indeed, that, that COVID has probably had an impact on this particular tragic outcome. Time will tell whether this review actually leads to action, but for children across the country who may secretly be in the same dire situation as Arthur was, time might not be on their side. Vincent McAvinney, ITV News. More than 3,000 households in northeast England are having to cope without power again tonight for a tenth night in a row. Today, the Energy Secretary made his first visit to affected areas where he warned energy firms they could face action. But with the race to reconnect still going on, another storm named Barra is on its way and due to hit on Tuesday. From Northumberland, here's Ellie Pitt. Carolyn and George Graham don't just need electricity to keep themselves warm. It's what they need to keep cold that's causing them worry. This meat is worth thousands to their business this Christmas. I'm concerned about the potential of losing stock in yes. the butchery side yeah. Yeah. and also loss of income this week and then extra costs because not everything's going to be covered by Northern Power Grid or insurance. It's been a difficult time. Yeah, I think we're just getting very tired. tired. And how many um, homes will that, so will that go back? There was Nine days into the emergency, the Energy Secretary made his first visit to an affected area in County Durham. I think it's completely unacceptable that they're still off uh, power. And that's why I have uh, instituted a review into whether the companies have invested enough off Gemma looking at this. And of course, we can. Uh, there will be some sort of enforcement. But that's little comfort to those who've sought shelter in Rothbury's town hall, like Ian, who faces waking up on another Monday morning without heating and a hot shower. You fall into a routine of wondering how many candles you're going to use that day, collecting some logs for the, the wood burner, um, and then about five o'clock at night, you keep looking at your watch, thinking, oh, there's only another 14 hours until daylight. <laughs> Do you need any batteries or anything? They're giving out supplies here into a second week, and weather forecasts suggest they shouldn't stop any time soon. Them, but more bad weather on the way. Yeah. I know. I've seen the forecast for uh, Tuesday. Um, we're, we're keeping a close eye on it, um, and I'll try and get some sleep before then. They're used to wild weather here. But this is just the start of winter, so residents are bracing themselves for more disruption in the weeks and months ahead. Ellie Pitt, ITV News, Northumberland. Now, Prince William has revealed how the trauma he witnessed as an air ambulance pilot had an impact on his own mental health. In a new podcast, he shares how rushing injured children to hospital made him fear for his own young family. But he's also recorded his happy memories, including describing how he and his mother would sing Tina Turner to calm his nerves on the drive to boarding school. Faye Barker has been listening. 
In 2015, Prince William began two years of flying with the East Anglia Air Ambulance. I just want to say very, very happy to be here. First day, nerves. <laughs> but those nerves turn to feelings of trauma, he says, especially when dealing with life and death situations involving children. Speaking emotionally at times in a new podcast, he reflects on the need to be open about our mental health. We all want to stay fit. We all want to go for walks. We want to go to the gym. We like to keep active. The doctors tell us it's good for us. Well, no one says how good it is to keep mentally fit. It's so important. Can you hear all the ducks, the geese, all the birds, all well on our coastline here? In an ITV documentary last year, Prince William shared moments of his time on the Soundringham estate in Norfolk. And it's during a walk here that he's recorded more personal thoughts. Well, we know there's still an awful lot of stigma about our mental health. And so when people in the public eye, such as Prince William, are open about it, it encourages many other people to do the same. William also reflects on memories with his mother and the secrets of the playlist when she drove him and Prince Harry to boarding school. One of the songs I, I massively remember and has stuck with me all the time, and I still to this day still quite enjoy, secretly, is Tina Turner's to the best. You're the best. Because sitting in the back seat, singing away, it felt like a real family moment. She'd be driving along, singing at the top of her voice. And we'd even get the policeman in the car, he'd be occasionally singing along as well. You'd be singing and listening to the music right the way out into the gates of school when they dropped you off, and, and that's when reality kind of sunk in that, you know, you really were going back to school. Memories from the future king that he hopes will get other people talking. Faye Barker, ITV News. OK, sport now, and it was more a question of what didn't happen in the Grand Prix in Saudi Arabia today. There were crashes on the track, clashes off it, three race starts and some corner cutting. Lewis Hamilton won, but both he and title rival Max Verstappen were summoned to the stewards. And after all that, while the two drivers are tied on points heading into the last race of the season, Chris Scudder was watching. The newest, fastest street track in the world, but high on crash risk. And Mick Schumacher's shunt was just the start in a chaotic race of two red flags. A second red flag later, the Red Bull's restart was red hot, and Hamilton was overtaken by his title rival. But the real chaos was yet to come. With the two title rivals at the front, they nearly collided again. Then the inevitable contact. And they collided! Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton! Hamilton's technical team were not impressed. Even the officials were arguing. You've got other channels going. No, 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 you told me as it happened. But Verstappen had picked up a five-second penalty and that left Hamilton clear in a dirty race that will live long in the memory. They're dead level on points with one race to go, the closest and most bitter title race for years. There could be fireworks in Abu Dhabi next week. Chris Scudder, ITV News. That's it. We're racing off now. The national and local weather forecasts are next, but from the whole team here this Sunday night. Bye-bye.